Pain is a complex issue. Most people think of it as a physical thing. The logic goes, something is damaged, and therefore you feel pain. In reality, it is not as simple as that, as it is essentially something that happens in the brain. If you are injured by something and the bit of the brain that registers pain is damaged, you will feel nothing. Also, people who lose limbs experience something called phantom pain. These people are not imagining it. They do experience the sensation. But also, it is clear that there's nothing there to be hurt. A lot of people may find themselves experiencing discomfort only to be told that there is nothing physically wrong with them. They think that what the doctor is saying is that they're making it up. The truth is, that all pain is ultimately in our heads. It's important to realize this, as it gives us strong clues as to the various ways we can deal with this. Pain can also be divided into new and old. New pain that starts all of a sudden is usually called acute, and it tends to be linked to an injury. The best way to deal with this sort of discomfort is to tend to the injury. Resting the injury might be helpful. Old pain has usually been with us for a long time and is also referred to as chronic. In the case of chronic pain, there might have been an old injury and there might even be some damage still present, but resting is probably going to make things worse. Painkillers can be helpful in acute pain, but tend not to be great when the condition is more chronic. Some painkillers are very addictive, leading to a bigger problem overall. In people with widespread chronic discomfort, while painkillers, with the supervision of a specialist, can be of some small use, the two things that have the best evidence are exercise and cognitive behavioural therapy. These two techniques have shown that they can be effective in helping people function better and improving their quality of life. This is best done under the supervision of a specialist, such as a physiotherapist. The evidence suggests that the most effective types of exercise are mild strength training and mild to moderate exercise that gets your heart rate and breathing up. These can be things like swimming, walking fast or cycling. The main problem is that people with chronic pain often believe that exercising may make their condition worse, which might stop them from being able to engage in it. The best way is to test it for yourself starting small and building up. Not moving is what makes the pain worse over time. A CBT program for chronic pain will have these components. Firstly, education. This will provide all the information necessary to understand the pain, what we know makes it better or worse, and answer questions the person experiencing the condition may have. Relaxation. By learning to relax, we can take control of that reaction and diminish the pain. This in itself is helpful, as people with chronic conditions tend to feel like they have no control over it. Graded activation. This is first about realizing that there are good days and bad days. Whatever is causing the pain has not changed, but they seem to be less affected by it. This means that it is possible to feel better and do more. Once this has been established, the therapist guides the person through a program to reduce flare-ups by gradually increasing the frequency and duration of the active periods. Pleasant activities. This change is about scheduling pleasurable fun activities and giving them as much of a priority as things like deadlines or doctor's appointments. Improving sleep. CBT sessions that target sleep alone and improve it such as CBT for insomnia, also improve pain. Cognitive restructuring and reframing. This process is about realizing what the person with pain can do and helping them maximize it. Coping skills. These are usually linked to cognitive restructuring and reframing. This is about giving the person tools to minimize the experience of pain, such as distraction reinterpretation and response techniques. Response techniques are about not living in fear of pain and minimizing the person's avoidance of their condition. 
Best results are obtained with a person-centred combination of both approaches.